Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on APA 7th edition. My name is Jillian Vanderbam and I'm the liaison librarian at the Archer Library for Education and Music. Today we're going to look a little bit into um, the APA citation style guide. Um, the APA manual is commonly used in education and the most recent edition is the 7th edition as you can see on this first page of my slides. So this edition would be um, available for purchase through the bookstore or through Amazon, um, but we also have many copies in the library that you can check out um, if you would like to look at all the different formatting options and all the different ways to cite materials. So I'd like to start off by looking at a few different formatting options. Um, of course, we like to, and we encourage citation, even if not required, by a professor. This just shows um, that you've given credit for other people's ideas and thoughts and hard work. And it also shows that you've done your homework and you understand the topic area that you're discussing or writing about, whether it be a paper, a presentation, or anything um, similar to that. So within formatting, EPA has um, a series of different types of things that they would like you to do in terms of fonts, um, entering in any figures or graphs. Um, so for font, um, they accept a bunch of different sans serif fonts and also serif fonts as well. So the most common ones you'll probably see are the Calibri, Arial, and Times New Roman. And they'd like those to be in either 11 point, point font or 12 point font. But really the key here is to make sure that you're consistent throughout the entire paper. So if you choose Times New Roman as your, your font, ensure that everything is written in Times New Roman. So this would include your title, your, um, your front page, any uh, subtitles, and the, of course the full text as well. So APA 7th does not require um, any running heads. Um, just the page numbers for each page. Um, of course, if your professor or instructor requests that you do add a running head, um, please do add um, the running head to your paper, but APA does not specifically require um, you to add this. This was something that was common to the, the last edition. So we just, re it's very recent that we, um, the seventh edition has come out. So if you've used APA in the past, there are a few changes this year. So you can see some examples of different headings, They're a little bit more flexible with different options and different ways um, to add different headings. And so you can see heading three to five um, are an attempt to increase readability. So I'm going to discuss um, references and citations. So this is really some of the most important um, parts or pieces for uh, APA citation. So we're going to talk about a few different ways to cite some of probably the most common resources that you'll be uh, reading through and wanting to cite or reference in your, your paper or project. So with any citation, we want to make sure we pay very close attention to where all the periods, commas, um, capitals, brackets, and what text is italicized and so forth. So I always compare citations to writing um, a letter. If you don't write the person's name right or you don't get the right postal code, the letter probably won't end up in the right location. And that's very similar to citing articles. So we have to be quite picky and really careful about everything and where um, it's placed. So as you can see below in the box, um, there's an example of a uh, book format. So if you've um, read a book or even a chapter of a book and it's something that you'd like to cite in your paper, this is how we would create um, your reference for that particular item. So you can see there's a space for two authors. If you have a single author or more than uh, two authors in the manual itself will show you very specifically how you would write that out. But you can see um, it's laid all the periods and commas um, and brackets out quite clearly in this example. So after the authors, we need a copyright year. And that's essentially when the uh, book 
was published followed by the title of the book in, ital um, in italicized text. If there's an edition, of course, we'll add the edition in brackets, the publisher of that book. And then it says a DOI or a URL. So this would um, most likely just pertain to books that are electronic. So your URL obviously is um, the URL where you're viewing the item. Um, the DOI stands for Digital Object Identifier. And um, this is something that should be kind of front and center. It's a, a series of alphanumeric characters. So when you're looking for all the citation information to create your citation, so this is your author, date, book title, if the item does have a DOI, it'll be right up at the top there. It should be quite difficult to miss. And um, so not all items will have a DOI, but some will have a DOI. So for our eBooks, um, you can cite them the exact same way as a regular book. So we already kind of know how to do that. And you can see a nice example below. Um, so we have our author, our date of publication, followed by the title of the book, the publisher, which is Springer Nature. And this one had a DOI, so you can see kind of what that DOI would look like. So your HTTPS, followed by kind of this alphanumeric um, character set. We always include what we call a hanging indent. So you can see, um, so in our final reference listing, which I'll show you an example of in a bit, we always um, put our references in alphabetical order. So by the first name, or sorry, the last name of the author. So in this case, B. And then um, our reference is formatted in a hanging indent. Journals is another very common one um, that you'll be citing. Um, journals have to contain the page numbers or the portion of that journal that you're citing. So chances are you're looking at an entire issue and probably only a certain page number range within that issue. So very similar to a book, we start with our authors, our, our data publish, and then we want the title of the article and then the name of the periodical or journal in italics. So um, we might have a publication in the Journal of Canadian Education, that would be our periodical. And then we want the volume and issue and the series of page numbers. That's quite important. So be attentive to what page numbers you're referencing and ensure they're included there, the ones in the citation there with the, the number signs. And then once again, if it has a DOI, um, we'll be adding that at the bottom. If it doesn't have a DOI, then we'll use a, a URL in its place. So websites um, sometimes are cited and can sometimes be a little tricky because they're not quite as consistent in the citation information they offer like published books and academic articles are. Um, most important thing to add if you're citing a website is um, to include the URL, URL and the date it was published. So below we can see our little example, um, our author. Our author may sometimes be a corporation or even a government body. Um, the date it was published, which is usually found at the very bottom of the website in the kind of footnotes area. The name of the, either the website or the page on the website that you're referring to. Who um, puts the website out, so whether that's an individual person or in this case BBC News. And then most importantly, including the URL, so whoever's viewing the citation is able to access that page. So I'm going to talk a little bit about in-text citations. So all the citations that we we're talking about, so our book, our journal, and our website, those will all appear um, at the very end of your paper. So on the very last page, you'll have a nice long alphabetical listing of all of the citations that you cited in your paper or that you referenced in your paper. So as you're writing your paper, um, you'll have to point out to the readers exactly what ideas came from which one of those references. And these are called your in-text citations. So we can see below there's a few examples of in-text citations. They're found within brackets and they just alert the reader um, to where that idea or if it's an image or a graph, um, which reference that comes from. And it's kind of a shortened form of your, your, your full citation. So if I write a nice long paragraph um, describing a certain technique, and that technique um, I read about in an article, say by Taylor Kay, 
I would, at the end of my description in brackets, um, put Taylor, comma, K, and the publication year, whether it's a book, an article, it doesn't quite matter which one it is. We always want to just have the author name and the date. And we enclose that in brackets. If there's more than one author, um, sorry, three or more authors, then we can use um, the short form et al after the first author name. And that just indicates to the reader that there's more than one author and they can look to your final listing of references um, to see the remaining authors. And that just keeps our paper a little neater rather than writing out quite a long string of authors, especially if there's upwards of 10 or 12 different authors um, on a paper. So I'm just gonna talk about our reference list. So this is kind of what we're gonna see in our reference listing. This will be the last page of your paper and include all the resources you've cited. You can see they all have hanging indents and they are alphabetical, so we have our A's to start with. Um, and that will be the final reference list um, at the very end of your paper. So I'm talk about a few little extra um, websites and sources that you can look at to get some more information about APA. This is a very brief introduction um, to APA citation style. The book is much more um, informative and detailed about some more aspects of APA. Of course, um, there are more uh, sources that we can cite other than books, journals, and websites, but those are the most common ones we seem to come across. So if you need some assistance or you'd like to learn a little bit more about APA citation style, um, we have a few websites here, mostly from um, the APA style um, website. And um, each one of these will kind of lay out for you a little bit further all the details and give you some further examples um, on citing with APA. Thank you very much for listening to this tutorial. If you have any questions or would like to follow up further, please feel free to visit the library website and book an appointment with one of our librarians.